Hi folks, so it's been some time since I last did a video on this channel, but I've recently changed uh, my RSS reader and I thought I might share the journey with you today. So as you can see, I've got uh, Firefox up here with, uh, well, the Feedly Pro website, because this is what I used to be using. This is what I was using up until, I don't know, a couple of months ago now. Um, and they um, and, and what pushed me to move away from Feedly, I always quite liked Feedly, although it was not open source, it was a proprietary service. Um, it was sort of supporting RSS and it was a really good RSS tool um, and it was supporting that open standard so I could see past the proprietary offerings that they had. But um, they decided to sort of restructure their pricing. Um, and what that effectively meant was, I can't even remember how much I was, I was paying now, but I was paying like the standard pro tier, and then they decided to bring in these three tiers, which sort of restructured pricing and restructured what you could get for all of that money. And I thought, well, Feedly was always a bit on the pricey side for what was effectively just a cloud RSS reader. I looked at what they were offering, and admittedly, I was grandfathered in on some of the things that would otherwise have been taken away to the people on the pro tier. But regardless of that, I never really like being grandfathered in when when um, services change their, their pricing structure. It always feels like they're just sort of paying lip service to you as a, as a, as a customer at that point, and that's, that's a problem, I guess. So I had to look around and see what, um, uh, what other options there were. In fact, I asked on Mastodon, and quite a few of you guys had a lot of uh, very useful suggestions, actually. A lot of people um, spoke of, because one of the things I wanted to is because I do use RSS a lot for work, and it is important that I actually get a lot of information from a lot of different sites and visiting each every, and every single one of them, it would, would make my job very, very difficult if it wasn't for, of course, the, um, the protocol of RSS. So I'm really grateful to RSS readers. And because I use so many different devices, having it on the cloud is, is really quite useful for me. It's very, very, very convenient. But also on top of that, um, I, I wanted something that was uh, hosted, not self-hosted. Um, and the reason for that is I, I wanted it to be sort of reliable and I am just not very good at self-hosting stuff. I still got a lot to learn in that department. But also, when it comes to sort of open source stuff and RSS stuff and open web in general, um, I kind of want to look for paths that are the most accessible to the most number of people. So self-hosting is an option. It's a solution for many, many problems on the internet, but um, you, but, but only for people who have that knowledge base or have the resource, resources, time, uh, you know, uh, company or whatever to, to learn, uh, which, uh, you know, th th those are options that are not, op um, are, those are not sort of available resources to, to every other person um, that you, you just meet in your day-to-day -day life. So in order for me to sort of talk about and spread the good word of FOSS, I, I wanted something that was um, not only sort of as, as open as possible, um, sort of reasonably priced, but Price was less of an issue because it's a professional tool for me in a lot of ways. Um, I can certainly see past a reasonably high price tag, uh, but also something that I could recommend to other people uh, as a good example of a free and open source uh, piece of software or, or service. So anyway, the, the restructuring of, of Feedly um, did sort of rub me up the wrong way. They were already charging a fair amount of money, and it became very apparent to me that Feedly was the kind of service that was going to to try and get away with doing as little as possible while charging as much as, as possible. And I know that's sort of the nature of business, but um, it certainly gave me enough of a push to look elsewhere to see what other options were available. And like I said, I went on Mastodon, asked a lot of you guys, had a good uh, had a good chat with you guys. And and yeah, Inno Reader did seem to be uh, one that was suggested quite a lot. And I did actually sign up to a premium membership for that. Uh, I'm still looking into it but it is also uh, not free and open source in terms of the, the software that's used itself. And it is, but, but it is also, like it's it's um, it's cheaper than Feedly, if I can remember correctly. Uh, and it's also a quite a good experience. But the one, uh, <laughs> the thing about Feedly as well is that in order to get the, this pricing structure up, I had to Google it. It wasn't like even available on their, their website. What they want you to do is they kind of want you to sign up for the free tier and then so they can sort of upsell the the pro tiers to you which i, I think oh that's a little bit like you know you, you you it's it's not exactly the the most uh forthright way to do business and and so so i decided you know what let's look let's look to the to the world of free and open source software and see what they can offer and a lot of you guys actually suggested news blur so this is news blur 
Newsblur is a free and open source piece of software, so you can host this if you want, but there is also a hosted solution at newsblur.com. And this has a lot of features that I'm not going to be able to talk about today. So the website will do a lot uh, a better job than I do. I will give you a little bit of a demonstration. Uh, the thing that really caught me in on, on Newsblur is that the the mobile applications are available in the F-Droid repository. So the F-Droid repository is an Android store, I guess, or a repository of software. Um, that is completely free and open source. So uh, with my phone that I do use for work, I don't have uh, the Google Play Store activated, but I do have the, f the F-Droid uh, Store. Um, and all of the tools that I use, um, top to bottom, um, are from that, that store, um, which is, and it's a really good store. Like, I do not feel that my phone has in any way been uh, hindered by, by supporting free and open source software, because doing what I do, uh, it's undeniable the usefulness of a, a smartphone. Um, and whereas, yeah, on company time, my privacy might be forfeit, it doesn't mean I can't support free and open source projects in, in the meantime, and as I do that. Um, and I'm fortunate enough that I do actually get to choose the, the software that I use, um, especially when it comes to on, on my personal devices, uh, providing it, it gets the job done and provide it, you know, I get given a lot of freedom in that regard, which I'm very grateful for. So um, I've, bec I've been using Newsblur as my primary RSS reader now for the past couple of months, and it's been wonderful. It's filled the space that Feedly has left, um, and it's, in fact, it's, a significant, it's significantly cheaper uh, if I scroll down. And it also puts its prices on the front page, unlike Feedly, where you have to Google around for it. Just saying. Um, so I've, I, I signed up to the $36 a year tier, Pretty much straight away. That's a very, very, very reasonable rate. They do have a free tier if you want to sort of get started. And 64 sites is actually a decent number of sites for a free tier as well. Uh, I'm probably more on a couple of hundred, but it it, it uh, it's fine. Um, it has a lot of um, features here and there. They list a few of them. This is a very short list of features. Um, it's quite uh, it's quite uh, easy to use. It works just like any other RSS reader that you might expect. So I've got here their example. You can actually just use an example um, interface that they use. But really, you just add in uh, a new site using that plus button. Um, you know, you just add in a new site. Um, and, um, and and it lists it on the left. You can sort it into folders like you do with any other RSS reader. Uh, the interface is nice. It's clean. It's fast. Uh, it makes good use of screen real estate. These are all small things, all things considered. Um, but yeah, it, it just, it does the job. Uh, it does the job well. It does the job, you know, you sit, you'll save a few quid on Feedly. Um, it's free. It's open source. You can host it yourself if you want. Um, I think HexDSL did try and, and have a go at hosting this himself, but there were so many, there were quite a few dependencies that you had to, to, to bring in in order to get it going. So for, <laughs> interestingly enough, and this is actually seems to be the case for a few different RSS readers that you can host yourself. Um, and we're not entirely sure why. I'm sure there's a good and well enough reason. Um, but RSS readers do seem to pull in um, quite a few, require a fair number of, of um, of uh, uh, deposit uh, dependencies, rather, um, very, um, which I, I guess if you're self-hosting might be something of an issue, and it's a bit, little bit interesting considering that it's it's I don't know RSS readers seem to be reasonably straightforward pieces of software. I don't know. I guess maybe, um, but yeah, um, and it pulls in. Uh, it works. You know, it, it it pulls in all the RSS that you require. Um, it gives you the pictures. Um, it has a wonderful um, uh, function as well that actually not you can so you can view the website itself in this window on the right hand side here uh, you can also uh, get it to uh, have a go at trying passing the text through the RSS reader as, as sort of text um, rather than just show the website in the window itself uh, some um, other services do this as I understand it, but you're not necessarily left at then having to click through to the website if it doesn't display in the RSS reader because they've only put a snippet in the RSS description. Um, and a lot of websites this does work for. You can choose it on a website by website basis as to whether or not you want it to try and pass through the text of the uh, uh, the, the document that it's that the RSS is referring to itself. But all things considered, can't complain. It's um, uh, it's it's provided everything that I require and. Um, and I'm absolutely, uh, absolutely happy with it. Um, there are a few interesting things that it allow y allows you to do, uh, which I don't think are demonstrated here. 
Uh, but one of them is that you, it provides you with a uh, an email address of sorts. It's semi-randomly generated, and what you can do is you can use that email address to sign up to newsletters, and newsletters will come through into your RSS feed. So you can so if if a website or something is offering uh, web uh, email updates but not RSS, then you can use the uh, the email updates, and it will just feed straight through into the RSS. Um, interface just like it was an RSS feed. That's really cool. Um, uh, what else is there that uh, can be done? Um, the the mobile app is is uh, is really quite good. I've uh, it it works exactly as you'd want it to, exactly as you'd expect. Uh, sharing articles is a particularly interesting um, uh, is particularly interesting as well. It's not something I can demonstrate right off the bat here, but uh, what you what you can do is you get given a URL, so it'll be like your username dot dot com, and you can share stories. Um, and they go, you know, like anything that you'll you'll pin up into your shared stories uh, category here, and uh, it will then post those stories um, to a feed on your um, uh, on on your little website that it that gives you. So it gives you a list, so you can actually share it onto uh, you know your username dot dot com. So honestly, I don't think I have much more to say about this. I mean, there's not much to say about it. Um, what I was looking for was a reasonably straightforward prospect of just an RSS reader that displays items as you as you would expect an RSS reader to do so, but using a hosted service. Uh, Feedly basically let me down on that one by being just a little bit, a little bit sort of. Um, I don't know, you know, just try, trying to, to, to charge as much as they can while providing as, as limited a service as possible um, and, and using reasonably, you know, hard sales tactics. And uh, Inner Reader certainly looked like a, a good alternative, but really, Newsblur, the free and open source solution, ticked every box that I needed to and threw in a few extra features that I thought were quite neat. Um, so, yeah, it operates the way that you'd expect an RSS reader to operate. Uh, it's reliable. Um, it has a few interesting ways to, to you know, share uh, news stories. It has that very interesting tool to um, so that you can sign up to, to newsletters and have them come through into your uh, your RSS reader as well. Uh, it's got a great interface. It's got a great mobile app available in the F-Droid store. You can host it yourself if you so wish. Thanks, uh, free and open source community. That's uh, that's that's another solution done. So, uh, uh, yeah, if you're looking for an alternative to the proprietary RSS services that you, you don't necessarily want to install your, you know, a, a feed reader onto on, as a desktop application, maybe you do use quite a few different devices, um, then yeah, this is um, this is this is just a great option, and it's it's everything that I I, I want it to be, and um, and I'm incredibly happy with it. Um, like I say, there are probably quite a few features here that I'm just completely missing out because this is quite feature rich and uh, probably more so than a lot of the uh, the more expensive offerings. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm definitely very happy with this and um, and I do recommend it. So, uh, newsblur.com, um, have a go, have a go, have a look. It's got a free tier. It's got a uh, an example that you can use here, um, and. Uh, yeah, and uh, have a good time with it, because I certainly did. So thank you guys very much for watching. Let me know your thoughts, of course, down in the comment section below. Um, and uh, for those of you wondering uh, where I've been all this time, um, I'm going to put up a little bit of a, another, a, a video, an update video later today. But um, um, but yeah, basically I've been doing a lot more live streaming and uh, stuff on other channels. So um, yeah. A lot of uh, a lot of fun to be had, um, but for the uh, foreseeable future, this will be uh, pretty rigidly within the tech um, video category context kind of thing. So, uh, if you're interested in what I've got to say on you know free and open source stuff, then this is the place to be. But um, just so you know, I'll be doing content over on Twitch. I do stream on D Live um, as well as Twitch. Uh, I do have a couple of other YouTube channels which you can link find links to in the uh, on my channel page on my channel YouTube page um, but also I spend a lot of time on Mastodon so you can find me Chris Ware at linuxrocks.online um, and I'll try and remember to put all the links for that down in the description below as well um, but yeah thank you guys very much for watching that's about it from me today and until next time I've been Chris Ware and you've been awesome toodaloo